Hi everyone, it's Tammy with Shabby Fabrics. I am so excited today to bring you the most amazing project from June Taylor. This is a brand new item that they have released. It is called a Shopper Totes. Who doesn't go to the grocery store? And you need reusable shopping bags. I love using reusable shopping bags. Um, they have come out with these shopping bags. They are wonderful. Now, not only do you make one, you make three. What I love is that they all fold up inside of each other. You pull these out and you can see these beautiful designs. They're all three different. There's a braided one. There's a cross one like this and a pocket tote. I love the pocket tote. This is my favorite. I keep this in my car, of course, and the others just fold up nicely right inside. Let me see if I can do this again for you. I just folded my ends in like this, fold them up, and I just carry a bag full of bags in my car. So when I go grocery shopping, I can just pick this up and go, and I have all my grocery totes are right there. So I'm going to show you today how to do the pocket tote. I'll set these aside for now. All right. So the fabric that's inside, normally June Taylor does batting. So it's quilt as you go. This is a utility fabric. And I want to show this to you. They're large when they come to you. And you get three of them in your kit, one for each one of these. I'm going to show you one of these like this. You can see how big they are. So you have your straps, which you'll cut away for later. So you would take this and trim a half inch all the way around this piece. All right? Do not iron this utility fabric. It will melt on your iron. You don't want to do that. And they do mention that in the pattern. There are laundering instructions for your shopping totes. So after you get them done, you have laundering instructions in there. So they are washable and reusable. The other thing that you get is the plastic. Here it is, right here. You get a piece of uh, hard plastic to stick in the bottom of your tote to give it some stability. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I did was I cut this all out, half inch, all the way around. I then used some spray baste and spray basted this to the wrong side of my lining fabric. I then stitched with a contrasting color of thread all the way around just on the inside. And that, you can see on the back here, so you can see your marks. That gives me a line to follow so that when I trim this after I'm done, I know exactly where my blue line is to trim this. So that's important that you stitch with a contrasting thread. All right. OK. So quilt as you go, or sew by number. We're going to call this sew by number because you're not really quilting anything. We don't have batting here. It's this utility fabric. So we're going to follow the numbers. So I have pre-cut my pieces per the pattern ahead of time. I didn't think you needed to see me do that. So. Your first piece is number one, and it's right here. And you notice how it completely fills the footprint of this piece. Number one fills it up, right? Number two is much bigger than this, but that's all right. I understand this, it might not look right, but it is. Because this piece is going to go right sides together like this. These are placement lines, not sewing lines. So I'm placing my fabrics right sides together. I'm going to put a pin in this. I'm going to hold these two pieces together. I'm going to put another pin at the bottom here, like this. And then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. And we are going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance down this seam right here, all right? So let's go do that. I'm going to roll this up to make it a little bit easier to handle at your machine. Just like that. All right, so I'm going to sew here to here, and that's right between one and two. OK? OK, here we go. So now I'm sewing with a quarter inch, and I'm keeping my quarter inch guide right here on the edge of this fabric. OK? 
Okay, here we go. All right, I'm gonna trim this thread. All right, so now I'm gonna open this up and as you can see, piece two now fills this space. See that? It filled it very nicely. So now I'm going to use a clover point to point turner. I like this tool for smoothing seams on this, the flat spatula end. See how nicely that just creased that? Because remember, you can't iron this. If you iron this fabric and touch that, it will melt on your iron or it will also turn really hard. Um, don't ask how I know that. You know I probably did that on accident. <laughs> I touched my iron to this, okay, and it does melt very quickly. All right, so now we're going to put piece three on. On this one, we've chosen the same fabric here for these two. So I'm going to put a couple pins in this, just like this sides together. I'm going to go sew that, so I'm just going to roll these up a little bit, turn them around, and I'm ready to sew. All right? Okay, so now let's talk about how to do a pocket. So I've gotten all the way up to nine. I'm on 10A and 10B, and I cut two pieces for that right here. All right, so one piece is your pocket and one piece is your lining on the inside. So to make a pocket, I'm gonna turn it like this. And I'm gonna press this in half. Let me grab a pressing mat here, I don't wanna Press on that. We're going to do this. I'm going to press this in half. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to line up my raw edges along the bottom here. And this is my pocket right here. You can see how that's going to go. So I have the folded one is on top of this. My raw edges are even here at the bottom. All right. And now we're going to put this on here. This is how I want it. So I'm going to flip this over. And I have all these raw edges that I'm going to keep together. I'm going to pin this. Definitely don't want that moving. There we go. Let's put another pin in that up here. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to double check that just to make sure because I don't want to unsew this on camera. All right, so when I flip this open, I have the top edge of the pocket. I have this correct so that you have the folded edges at the top. And this is my lining underneath. So when it goes down, this is how my pocket will look. All right, so let's go sew that. Let me roll this up a little bit. Make that easier to move. All right, here we go. All right, let's see how we did. 
trim this long thread here. Oh, got a pin still in there. I thought, why did that not open up like I thought it would? There we go. See, that is perfect. All right. Gonna crease this seam like this. All right. So now I would just continue adding all your pieces. So we're going to come back over here. We're going to do 11, 12, 13 is just a plain piece like this. Goes on here like this. 14, 15 and 16 are long. 17 and 18, and then as you go, just keep following your numbers all the way along and completely finish this. So I have done that ahead of time. So let's get that out. There we go. Okay, so the other thing that I have done is I have trimmed this one. This one is completely trimmed. So let's turn that over so you can see how I trim this. We just trim this right along the edge and I left my line intact so I know that I'm trimming this on my blue line. Okay? Alright, so we trimmed it. We are good to go. So now we're ready for handles. Handles go on when the bag is still flat and I like that. Um, that way I can get them on there nice and secure. So let's talk about the handles. I'm going to set this just to the side for right now. We're going to talk about the handles, the straps. What I have is your strap material that we have cut out on the line. This I didn't leave a seam allowance around this like I did on this. I just simply cut this straight out on the line. Okay. All right, so I'm going to grab my pressing mat. I'm going to use a tool called a hot ruler. I'm grab my iron here. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is I want to put a half inch seam allowance in the top of this. So a hot ruler is going to allow me to iron on top of it. Let me get that on there right. Okay. So a half an inch would be my first line. And I can actually iron right on this ruler. It's amazing. It doesn't melt. It's made out of this amazing material. I don't even know what it is. All I know is it works. Just like that. See that nice crease that put in that? So I know that's exactly half an inch. So that's what I want to fold these in. I'm then going to take my strip, do the same thing on the other end. We've done that ahead of time. Okay. You're going to fold your strip in half first and press it. And that's just going to give you a mark. It's going to just give you a crease so that you know where the center of your strip is. Once I find the center, then I can fold my other edges into the center. Okay, so we're just going to fold our edges in like this and press all the way down. And then same thing on the other side. Fold that to match and press. All right, so you continue all the way through. There we go. Get that on there. So your strap looks like this. Okay. Now we're going to insert this into the middle of it. I'm just going to open this a little bit and insert my utility fabric is what they call this. I'm not sure what it is. It's like a kind of like a heavy interfacing I would call it. It's very nice. I like the stiffness of it and I like the body that it gives my project without the thickness of batting because batting definitely adds a big thick layer. This, this stays flatter than that. All right, so once we get that in there now I'm going to fold this directly in half and I'm going to press this. I'm going to press this handle in half now because I want that crease to stay there now. I'm going to press along.
Okay. So once I have it nice and pressed and it's laid nice and flat, I would take this to the machine. I'm going to start right here on this edge, about an eighth of an inch in with matching thread, and I would just sew straight along. So you want to sew these two folded edges together, start here, and sew all the way down, and you do that twice for two straps. And I have made those ahead of time right here. So you can see how I've sewn with red thread all the way down, okay? Okay, so let's talk about attaching our handles to our bag, all right? Oh, this is just beautiful. I just love this collection. This is Sensibility by Maywood Studios. All right, so we have our straps. And first of all, we're gonna sew our straps, then we're gonna flip them, and I'm gonna show you how to do a box X tax on them for added strength on your handles, and we're gonna sew them on. All right, so I'm going to use two different rulers and a friction pen. Let me grab a friction pen here. All right. I love friction pens. They just work so slick. All right, so these measurements are in the pattern. So I'm going to be 7 and a quarter inches in. I'm going to be 15 inches down, so I'm going to utilize two rulers today to do this. All right, this one is going to set 15 inches in, 15 inches down, so I set my 15 inch mark right on the edge of the bag. This one, I'm going to set my seven and a quarter inch mark on the edge of the bag. And then I want to make a mark an inch and a half long. All right, so I have this one set at seven and a quarter. I have this one set at 15, and I'm an inch and a half in on this side right here. All right, and I'm going to draw a line, just like that. I'm going to do that three more times. Okay, so once I get my marks on here, we're going to take our handles, and we're going to put them on this way. You might be thinking, wait a minute, we don't want handles going backwards. Well, I have to sew the handle on first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to line them up like this, right on my marks. I'm going to put a pin in this carefully. I don't bend my pin. And then we are going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance and sew the handle to the bag. There we go. Perfect. So we're going to sew the handle to the bag and then flip the handles back over and that's when we're going to do our box X tack. All right. So I'm going to take this to the machine and I have red thread in my machine now so that it's going to match my handle. So I'm going to go ahead and do my quarter inch there and we will be right back. So I'm going to reinforce this handle as well. I'm going to back over this seam. I'm going to do a back tack here. Just like that. Kind of reinforce that a little bit. I know that my shopping bags are usually very heavy, and so I know I need a little reinforcement on my handles. I'm also one of those people that tries to gather all the shopping bags up all at once in one trip and take them into the house. Okay, here we go. Trim that thread off of there. Okay, take my pins out. Oh, that's perfect. All right, so now. I'm going to press this a little bit here. Let me move these rulers out of the way. I'm going to give these handles a little bit of a press just to remind them that I want them to fold up. Sometimes they need a little coaxing with a hot iron. All right, there we go. All right, now the last measurement I'm going to do with a ruler lay that flat, is I'm going to measure three inches down 
on my handle from the top edge. The reason I'm going to measure three inches down and put a mark there on my handle is this is a stop and go mark. So I'm going to start sewing at my mark, sew down, do a box X tack, and then sew up. And then I'm going to stop here because I still need to put the binding on this bag. So we need to have this edge open to do the binding on it. So I have it marked at three inches. You don't need to remember that. It's in the pattern. And I'm going to pin this on here carefully like this. So I don't want my handle to move. I want it to stay straight. Let's put another pin in this here. Okay, and then I'm going to mark this one for three inches. Just like that. And I am using the one inch side on my Creative Grids ruler. If I were using this side, I'd be measuring three and a half inches because I'd be using my black numbers. So you want to make sure you have it turned around so that you're using your white numbers because those are even numbers, not the half number. All right, I'm going to stick a couple of pins in this. Just like that. All right, so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to start here and go down, and I'm going to do a box X tack all in one motion and come right back up and stop here. And then I'm going to do the other one, okay? Here we go. Now when I get to here, I'm going to count how many stitches I'm going to take. I'm going to take nine stitches. And I know nine stitches is how many it takes to get across this. So if I come up nine stitches and across nine stitches, I know it's going to be super close to being a square. All right? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine stitches. All right? So now I'm going to turn. I'm going to go straight across this handle. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it again, and now I'm going to make the X part. So now I'm just going to aim for this corner, just like this. I know I'm aiming for it. A lot of times sewing is like driving. So if you look at the corner that you're sewing to, chances are you're going to sew fairly straight into this corner. So I'm just going to look at this corner. I'm not going to mark it. I'm just going to go. OK, right on it. I'm going to turn it again. Now I'm going to sew back across the bottom of this, because I need to get to this bottom corner. So I'm just going to come right back across the bottom, like that. And now I'm going to sew my last cross here. So I'm going to come right back up to this corner. And again, I'm going to watch this corner as I sew. I'm not going to look at my needle. I'm going to watch the corner and you'll just sew right to it. Here we go. There we go. All right. I get to here. And now this is a side. I'm just going to drive. I'm just going to sew straight up this now. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. OK, that is perfect. That's exactly what I want. My handle's on, everything's straight and even, and I stop three inches short so that I can get my binding attached. So now I'm going to go ahead 
and attach the handle on the other side in exactly the same manner. Okay, so we have our handles are attached and I have my box X corners are on there. We've left our opening. Now we get to actually make the bag. So now I'm going to fold my bag, wrong si right sides together. I'm going to line up my edges here on the side seams. I just love the way June Taylor does this. They have, they have pre-cut my boxed corners for me. I just love that. It makes it so much easier to box corners with their patterns. They do this on their other tote bags, on their Quilt As You Go tote bags. It's wonderful. So easy to do. All right, so I'm going to pin that one. I'm going to pin this side seam together. Then we're going to take this to the machine. And we're going to sew this with a half an inch seam allowance on each side. And I'm going to back tack at the beginning and at the end. I want to definitely reinforce my stitches. All right, here we go. Okay, so once I have these done, I am going to go ahead and press these seams open. I'm going to kind of just fuss with my bag here a little bit and get it flat so that I can press this in the middle. I'm going to open this seam allowance up. And I should have told you also, I have my iron on medium heat. I do not have this iron on the hottest setting that it can go on. Again, because I was reminding you that this stuff does melt. This interfacing will melt if you touch it on your iron. So this iron is set on medium. It is not set on the hottest setting that it will go. You want to be careful with that. If it gets too hot, it crinkles up. It, it's not very good. It's not very nice. You get stuff on your iron. Nobody likes that. All right, so I'm going to press my seam allowances open here. There we go. All right. So to box my corners, now I have an opening at the bottom. And you can see where this V is. And I'm just going to fold the fabric so it exactly lines up with the V. And I think you can see that in the overhead camera there. It's exactly lined up. I'm going to stick a pin in that. I'm going to line up the other side. And you can see how you can fold it this way, you can fold it that way. I want it folded so that V is perfect, just like that. like that and then I'm going to put one more pin in these seam allowances because I want them to behave themselves and stay open. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and pin the other side while I'm at it. Save myself a little bit of time walking back and forth from the sewing machine. There we go. This is the easy way to box corners for sure. Otherwise, you're, you're measuring your, did I get that right? I think I did, okay. You're measuring, you're trying to figure out where to measure from, your point, you're cutting things off. It's, boxing corners is never my favorite thing when making a bag, but I'll tell you, June Taylor makes it very easy. Okay, so again with a half inch seam allowance here, I'm definitely going to reinforce this seam. Whoop. That little seam allowance wants to flip up. 
make it behave itself there. There we go. All right, now if you wanted to finish these edges on the inside, you could easily serge these edges. You can zigzag them, you can finish them however you want. I'm okay leaving them like this because it's just a grocery tote. So let's go ahead and turn it right side out. Poke my corners out. Look how cool that just boxes that corner so nicely. They are just perfect. I love that. Anybody can do this. This is easy. This looks like a professional bag. I'm totally impressed. How amazing is this? I love this. All right, so now the next step is you put your binding on. You're going to do two and a half inch strips. You're just going to attach raw edges together, flip it over, and I'm going to show you on the other one here the way I did this. I flipped this over to the back and I actually used my machine to stitch this down. I used a dark green thread and a light color on top and I'm going to move that binding out of the way so you can see my stitches right here. I think the overhead camera can pick that up. How I actually machine stitch this binding down. I do that a lot with children's quilts or utility quilts that I know that are going to get washed a lot or see a lot of use. I don't do hand stitching on my binding. I did stitch that down and you can see my stitches here in the dark green. And then I went back and I started again about three inches down and I just sewed up and I just did another box X tack here at the top and right back down again and that really secures my handles right there. That's all there is to making this. I think this is adorable. I love this. I'm going to make this in several different fabrics. I did put the plastic fits right in the bottom. It gives it a little bit of weight. It also helps it hold open so when I'm bagging groceries at the grocery store, you can see how it stands really nice and it stands open. So it's very easy to bag my groceries. So I will see you next time with another fun tutorial from Shabby Fabrics. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And I'd love to hear your comments about these wonderful shopping bags. You can leave comments in the video right below this. Thanks so very much.